Hello everyone, my name is Earl Holland. I am an online content editor with Helio, a comprehensive website that provides news, information, and education for doctors, nurses, and other healthcare professionals. Our news team produces content for more than 20 types of physicians, giving them and other healthcare providers the information they need to stay informed and improve patient health. We report on important clinical trial results published in scientific journals or news presented at major meetings that the doctors attend every year. Every day, we write news that doctors need to stay up to date with regarding the newest drugs and treatments. As scientific research evolves and treatment options for most medical conditions become more personalized, the demand for accurate and timely specialty-specific news and information will continue to grow. That's where we, the reporters, come in. Medical publishing, which is what we do here at Helio, offers exciting opportunities for students interested in pursuing a career in journalism or a related communications field. Several of our staff members filmed the following roundtable discussion to help you learn more about Helio. We hope you enjoy it and find it informative. Well, my name is Caitlin and I'm a writer here at Helio. I cover all things infectious disease. I'm joined today by Eamon, Aaron, Earl, and Joe. And we're going to talk to you guys a little bit about our experience in journalism and communications, as well as give a little insight on what we do here at Helio. Um, so to kind of kick things off, we're going to talk a little bit about our education and professional experience before coming to Helio to give you guys an idea of how we kind of got started with everything. So I got my journalism degree from Rowan University, and I had concentrated studies in creative writing, sociology, and new media production, which is photos, videos, HTML stuff. Um, I worked part-time in a newsroom as an undergrad my senior year, took my first full-time gig as a features writer, covering very, very local small space, and then hopped to a publication covering all of New Jersey, doing um, breaking news and features writing. So I was kind of all over the place a little bit. And now I'm at Helio, like I said, covering international infectious disease news. So that's kind of my background. Um, Eamon, do you want to hop in and talk about what you did before Helio? Yeah, of course. Thank you, Kate. Um, I work alongside Kate uh, as the online content editor for Infectious Disease News. Uh, I cover a pretty wide spectrum of infectious diseases, emerging research in that area. Uh, obviously, with the COVID-19 pandemic, that now involves a lot of pandemic coverage as well. Uh, I went to school for communications at Temple University in Philadelphia. I had sort of a pretty wide breadth of different experiences during my undergrad. It's a pretty broad field. Uh, the majority of the internships and the research work I did uh, involved journalism. I started out as an editor in the arts and entertainment section of my student newspaper. I worked the food beat in Philly for a while, covering new restaurant openings and things of that nature. Uh, my most recent internship before making the hop after graduation to Helio was with the Japan Times, also in the arts and entertainment sector. Uh, it was during a study abroad stint that I did there during my senior year, covered a lot of um, uh, film events, things of that nature in the arts and entertainment industry. All right, Erin, do you want to hop in? Yeah, thanks, Kate. Um, so I'm an online content editor with Helio Primary Care. We cover all relevant medical topics to primary care, so a wide, very wide range of topics. Um, I came here from Wilkes University in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. I majored in English and I had a minor in workplace writing. So actually none of my internships were journalism related. It was, um, I had one internship for an insurance company in workplace writing where I did things like work on the employee manual and work on instructions for working with the company. And then I also did an internship at Northeast Editing, which is a small publishing company that wrote articles for a Wikipedia type database for high school students. And then I also did some work with the school paper and with the English department's literary magazine. Very cool. All right, Earl, whenever you're ready. I am Earl Holland. I am an online content editor at Helio focusing on podcasts. Previously, I was an online content editor for Cardiology Today. Um, I started out my path in journalism. I started out doing newspaper in both middle school and high school and did, did a variety of things, did news, did sports. And then I did four years undergraduate at the University of Maryland Eastern Shore. Uh, my internship included uh, a stint doing a uh, sports internship at the George Michael Sports Machine in Washington, DC for NBC4. And then after that, I went into, did some part-time stuff doing radio as a board op and on air for radio stations in Salisbury, Maryland. And then following that, I went. I was a freelancer in newspapers for, for a few newspapers, Gannett newspaper in Salisbury, Maryland. After that, I became a full-time 
a full-time uh, reporter doing doing a variety of things from features to pretty much some sports every now and then to some hard news and, and city government before becoming a uh, a reporter covering Wicomico County local governments there and then eventually becoming a sports reporter, a uh, full-time sports reporter for three years. After that, it became a sports, a web producer and they became a web producer for the Wilmington News Journal. Uh, and then I came to Helio in 2018. And, and between there, I started a part-time stint uh, doing radio, doing uh, production stuff, as well as doing some uh, on-air, on-air things, doing radio, doing, uh, of course, doing, uh, radio weekend uh, air shifts and doing some pregame shows and things for for local sports broadcasts. Um, it is a pretty diverse plate, and not everybody may have the you know. Every, it's great to have everybody that everybody has a variety of different angles. And I forgot to mention at, at UMES, I was also an English major with a concentration with communication. So that was pretty much at the time radio, television, uh, uh, written written uh, journalism. So any anything along those lines. It, it is a pretty uh, lengthy resume. <laughs> impressive. <laughs> All right, Joe, how about you? Hey, uh, thanks, Kate. Uh, my name is Joe Grimigna. I'm the online content editor for Helio Psychiatry. Uh, so we cover all things related to mental health developments. And uh, so that, that includes things like depression, eating disorders, Alzheimer's, suicide, anything related to psychiatric research uh, we tend to cover. Uh, so I, w- I went to Rowan University in South Jersey. Uh, I, my undergrad was in writing, and then I have a master's degree in writing as well. It was a four plus one program, so I got both in uh, five years. And then when I was at Rowan, I was uh, editor-in-chief of our school newspaper, The Wit. Um, and then post-graduating, um, well, actually my senior year at Rowan, I started interning at Helio. And then that transitioned um, after graduating into a staff reporter position for infectious disease news. Um, which that, that was where I started to really get my, uh, my feet wet. And I, I interviewed, uh, I actually talked to Fauci on the phone, Dr. Fauci. So that was really cool. That was prior to the um, COVID-19 pandemic, but that was really exciting. Uh, it, retrospectively, that was really exciting. And then, uh, so after uh, IDN, then I transitioned to Helios Psychiatry, which is my current role. Um, so yeah, that, that's about my trajectory into the company. Awesome. All right. So kind of moving on from there, obviously, we all work at Helio now. So um, like I mentioned, I'm a writer for Infectious Disease News. I do a lot of daily content, including breaking news coverage uh, internationally, everything from, you know, COVID coverage, Ebola outbreaks in the Congo, all of that kind of stuff, as well as um, covering newly published infectious disease studies. Um, I get to write a lot of longer term, longer length feature stories that we use for our cover stories on our print publication, Um, as well as they go online. I also get to travel to conferences and meetings, get to meet with researchers from all over the world, which is really cool. As Joe mentioned, I've gotten to, you know, interview Dr. Fauci quite a few times. Granted, it was, you know, pre-COVID. He's a little busy now, but back in the day, I talked to him a lot for a lot of infectious disease stuff. Um, And yes, I get to do a lot of that um, in my current role as a staff writer for infectious disease news. But as everybody else kind of mentioned, we all sort of have different roles here at Helio. So do you guys want to expand a little bit more on what you're doing now for Helio? Eamon, if you want to go first. Yeah, of course. Uh, As I mentioned before, Kate and I work in pretty similar roles. So to avoid being redundant, um, I'll just say that uh, I... In terms of the writing that I perform for IDN, it's very similar, uh, but the sort of the point of differentiation between our two roles is whereas Kate covers a lot of the long form cover stories, things of that nature, uh, I'll do um, uh, sort of writing shorter form things for academic journals throughout the week. And then in addition to that, I'll work a lot of the back end stuff involving um, our website and our news wires that go out on a daily basis, things of that nature. Um, and uh, a lot of interviewing, you know, things that sort of come with the territory in any editorial role. Um, and I will say it's very rewarding. You know, you do get to meet a lot of interesting researchers and definitely learn something new every day as someone who doesn't necessarily come from a scientific background. Absolutely. Erin, how about you? Yeah, so I'm also an online content editor, but with um, primary care, we cover, again, a wider range of topics. So everything from, uh, lately it's been a lot of infectious disease just because of the pandemic, but we also cover things like cardiology and oncology and sleep medicine, neurology. So a lot of different topics. And I primarily write longer feature stories, but I also do some of the shorter stories, just write up on medical journal articles. And then like you guys both mentioned, um, we cover meeting news. So we'll do... Before the pandemic, we traveled to medical meetings and do some short stories and longer stories on 
presentations and research presented at medical meetings. And then um, I also, like Eamon mentioned, handle stuff with posting articles to the website and managing social media. Okay, very cool. Earl? Uh, yeah, and my role currently, I do a variety of things. Uh, normally doing show notes for upcoming episodes of podcasts, just you know, going through transcribing the questions that are going that were asked, just so there's a perfect time for people can just they need to fast forward, they can find those episodes, find that part of the episode. In addition to that, I have recently started with the creation of Vital Capacity. I've been helping uh, set those episodes along, including doing some interviewing with the uh, first host, uh, Dr. Abhishek Bardwaj. We uh, conducted an interview with that and did the editing and production on that as well. And in addition to that, uh, we I also recorded a couple of episodes and another one uh, coming up soon, uh, basically running down some of the big headlines that were very popular in uh, Helio's, uh, 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 going through Helio's uh, most popular uh, articles on the website, pardon me. Uh, and, and the big thing is, it's very interesting getting that perspective where you're not only uh, taking in some of the other experiences that you have, but you're using that to, to create something new and and it, it's really interesting. Also, I recently ed, uh, interviewed uh, Dr. Shika Jane uh, for one of her episodes of Oncology Overdrive, which will be coming out in the very near future. Uh, and it was very interesting to take that perspective. Normally, interviewing someone who's so used to interviewing others and, and seeing that and seeing how that was was a very unique transition. Very cool. All right, Joe. Hey, thanks, Kate. Um, yeah, so I like to sort of think about my role as uh, the online content editor for paleo psychiatry as sort of um, trying to figure out what psychiatrists, what news they, they want to know. And I think this is relevant to all paleo specialties, but um, our audiences, clinicians and the healthcare audience. So we're trying to figure out what news they need to know and then target our content to them. So a lot of that sort of manifests in uh, journal research. So we'll, we'll give a breakdown of longer journal articles and we'll kind of boil down the essentials of what clinicians need to know in a timely fashion and then give that to them in our, our site. But I, we also like to focus on some longer features. So uh, recently I've been working on some Q&As. I did one about uh, the political polarization of, you know, the current political climate and how that's affecting the mental health of individuals and then how psychiatrists can reach people who are feeling affected by that. And then I have another one coming out uh, soon about uh, climate psychiatry, which is a newer discipline uh, about climate change and its effects on mental health and then where that intersects with, you know, psych psychiatry and research. So we, we like to mix um, some of the more clinical scientific research within some broader, um, more mainstream news as well. Okay, so kind of based on that, you guys can see that we uh, cover a lot of stuff. There's a, a learning curve to what we cover and what we do. And um, while it can sound really sciencey and probably a little bit intimidating, there's a lot of really cool aspects to our jobs and what we do at Helio. Um, I know one of uh, my favorite parts of the job is getting to travel to conferences like most of us mentioned and what we do. Um, I've been everywhere from Seattle, San Francisco, DC a few times, you know, we always get to stay, we get to kind of do the meeting coverage and everything from, you know, the different convention centers, we meet with people from all over the world and everything to do our interviews, do videos, stuff like that. So that's one of the really great things that I like about working here at Helio. Um, I also got to say, I really love the flexibility of the job. Um, other than when we're traveling to conferences, you know, as a reporter, it's, it's hard to get nights and weekends free. And with Helio, we do get a very nice work-life balance. We get a really flexible schedule. Um, and of course I enjoy the team, my, my team and working with everybody here at Helio. So those are some things that I really, really enjoy about what I'm doing now. But what do you guys enjoy about working here, here at Helio or your different publications, even if you wanna kick it off? Yeah, of course. And I touched on this briefly during my last response, uh, but uh, I, I really enjoy being able to genuinely learn something new every day. I know that's sort of a cliche that a lot of people use to describe their job, but it genuinely is the case with what I do, especially because I don't come from a scientific background. All of the editorial I'd done previously to this role with Helio was arts and entertainment oriented, which is a very different spectrum of um, coverage in terms of who you're interviewing and what you're discussing. Uh, and I also do have uh, a pretty passionate interest in the life sciences in general. So it's really interesting to get to talk to researchers who are from a completely different world uh, than the one that I'm working in. And they'll sort of break down and explain to me, you know, the ins and outs of HIV research or malaria. Um, there's a, even though infectious disease is very specialized, uh, being in this role has made me realize how much of a spectrum and diversity of interesting topics there are within it. So that's probably it for me. 
Okay, Erin, how about you? What do you what do you like about working here at Helio and your job? Thanks, Kate. Um, well, I definitely do like you mentioned the flexibility of it and just having a flexible work environment. So being able to when we're in the office, we have different we have our cubes, but then we also can go work in the lounge. And then also just being having the capability to work from home during the pandemic and moving forward is great just because you have a lot more options where you can live and everything. And again, just being able to work in a flexible environment is great. And like Eamon mentioned, not, I also don't come from a, any sort of medical background. So it is interesting to learn and to speak with researchers on all different medical topics about all different things. And really they do apply to many different aspect, aspects of your life and you might not even realize it until you start talking with the researchers, you know, so it's definitely very rewarding work. Very good. Earl, what about you? A lot of things. I like the creative aspect of things, just being able to not only with the editing process, both for audio and video things, but I also like the environment as well. I feel like after years working in print newspapers and working for companies, uh, it's, it's nicer to be a, you know, working at a family run company and where there's more of a familiarity, there's different events. Of course, there's the spring fest and there's the holiday, the holiday gatherings and things like that. Just being able to meet people and just sort of not worry about here today, gone tomorrow type mindset, which I think is definitely great. There's a little consistency is great. And I think a lot of us who all came from print backgrounds understand that with all the craziness that goes on in the print world and wondering whether you'd be, uh, still working there uh in a week or so let alone uh a month it's it's a i like being like that consistency and i like having that and just being able to get to know people more on a basis where hey you'll see somebody walk, see somebody walk by it's like hey caitlin how are you doing you know things like that could not agree with any of that anymore uh joe how about you what are some parts of the job that you enjoy yeah i would echo what the others have said about um learning something something new because I don't come from a clinical background either and that, that was actually when I first started with the company as an intern I was a little bit um, nervous because I, I don't have that medical background so I thought oh like how am I going to learn all of this more what, what seemed like complicated stuff so I sort of saw it as a, a challenge and a really worthwhile learning experience to sort of um, put myself into something that I didn't really have a background in and, and sort of recognize you know patterns in the writing and in the research where you can and identify um, how to boil those essential elements that the researcher, or researchers and clinicians want to know about into something um, more palatable and, and more easy to digest. So I sort of see it as you're sort of putting a puzzle together. And then one of the more specific elements of that that I really enjoy is coming up with, with questions to ask the researchers about you know, their, their research and what they're working on and how I can articulate a question in a specific and you know, um, nuanced and balanced and um, objective way where I can then get a really rewarding answer out of it. I find that to be fun. Absolutely. Um, you know, kind of looking at Helio as a whole, it's kind of easy to say in our own little publications and our own, you know, primary care, infectious disease, everything. Um, it can seem very niche and very, you know, this is what you're doing and how do I branch out from here? How do I take steps in my career from here? So um, something really important to talk about would be how working here at Helio and doing what we do has prepped us for the next steps in our careers, um, you know, if we if we do stay at Helio for forever, if we leave Helio, um, whatever the case may be, um, and I think one of the biggest things that I've really gotten to hone in on and master working here, especially working for Infectious Disease News right now, um, is you know time management and prioritizing and really just working through a ton of stuff being thrown at you all the time. Um, whenever I talk to my friends and family about what I do, I always refer to 2020 as my Super Bowl. For an infectious disease reporter, 2020 was our Super Bowl, and that's just the best way to put it, because we had so much news coming in from all different angles, international, different aspects of it, vaccine rollout, you know, long-term side effects, all of that. So having that, like, thrown at us while still trying to do daily content on things not COVID-related and managing other aspects of the job, I feel like... Helio has really, really prepped me to be able to handle so much on my plate at one time without me feeling overwhelmed and without feeling like I was going to panic and kind of get lost a little bit. Um, so I'm going to mix up the order here a little bit. I'm going to start with Joe. Um, how do you think what you've been doing here at Helio so far has prepped you for like the next steps in your career and what you want to do? I would say primarily, uh, and I think that this is applicable to any career path, but especially one in the communications field, journalism field is that it's really helped me become a more precise and, and effective, I'd like to think so, uh, communicator. Um, 
so I'm always communicating with a variety of different people, whether that's, you know, supervisors, uh, coworkers, and then primarily, you know, psychiatrists, doctors, having started off in the infectious disease realm. But then when I interned, I was also uh, communicating with people who worked in nephrology, uh, hematology, oncology, and now psychiatry. So there, there's overarching um, elements of commun communication that are apl applicable across the board. But then I think you can also tailor your messages for you know, who, who you're communicating with to be, be a more effective communicator, depending on who you think your audience is. And, you know, as, as a journalist, that, that's a vital thing is figure out, figuring out your audience and then figuring out how best to convey the message you want to get across to them. Absolutely. Earl, how about you? Uh, I'd like to co-sign a little on Joe's. I think that's great. Uh, it's, it's important to know your audience and being able to to tailor your, tailor the message that you're writing for a particular audience. I also think a lot of stuff that I learned from this experience is just sort of some of the some of the little pointers and tips that I learned just even from the production aspect of editing videos and editing podcasts, I think that uh, those are very helpful and and it helps sort of broaden uh, expand your horizons as well. Because honestly, prior to uh, prior to to working at Helio, I had not been doing a lot of podcasting stuff prior to that, and I think this is one of the things, and along with uh, some of the other things I've been doing, that sort of got me into that idea, of the mindset of prod podcasting, and knowing how how a podcast is produced, especially on a higher quality level. And I think those things are very important. And I also think, especially knowing the writing styles, of course, going into print journalism, there's one particular way that's done. And then other places, there's a completely different way, especially with the style guides, depending on where you go. And I think that's also essential. So it's something you can take with you to your next career or, or something you can hone while you're here. Absolutely. Erin, how about you? Thanks, Kate. Um, so I definitely think Helio has helped me become more well-rounded. So I, like I mentioned earlier, I primarily had a writing background, but as an editorial assistant and then later as an online content editor, we do a lot of other things besides writing. So it's a lot of in-depth research, um, posting stuff on social media. I never had that big of a background with that, but definitely that's a big part of the job. And then um, writing things like emails, I never expected to learn how to do that. So it's something that you can definitely take moving forward. And um, yeah, so it's definitely like a bunch of different roles, responsibilities, but like you said, you're able to manage it very well. It's not overwhelming. So it's definitely a really interesting job and can be applied to a lot of different fields. Absolutely. Eamon, how about you? Yeah, um, so I echo what everyone else said. I think those are all very good, very good points um, that, I, that I agree with. Um, I, I think for me, uh, my passions lie um, in terms of my long-term career goals. I wanna write about climate science and biodiversity. That's the most interesting area of science um, and you know, where I want to eventually end up. Uh, and I think working at Helio has really helped me just get a feel for how scientific writing works um, in particular for researchers and writing directly for the people in that field versus writing for a very broad audience where you need to go through and explain each and every aspect. Um, so that's been very useful. And I will say uh, the management and the editors at Helio are really, really awesome about taking into account what your interests are. And, you know, as we mentioned before, infectious disease and the specific specialties might seem very, you know, tight and specialized at first. Um, but uh, even within infectious disease, uh, I've been able to write about climate science studies that tie into that. Um, a lot of emerging zoonotic infections involve animals and biodiversity that way. And, uh, you know, speaking up and mentioning that uh, when I started working here was a really big benefit um, because now I'm able to report on stuff I'm very much passionate about and will help me out um, in a future role, um, hopefully if I can work my way into that industry, um, in addition to having all of the other experience on top of it that just comes from covering your day-to-day -day specialty work. All right. Okay, so to kind of finish off the video, we wanted to offer some advice to anyone looking to start their career in journalism and communication, uh, whether that be here at Helio or somewhere else. And um, my advice would be to not be intimidated. Um, I remember when I came uh, for my first interview at Helio, uh, we discussed technical writing, and I said that I thought this job would be a great opportunity to add to my technical writing portfolio. And they responded with, oh, well, what's already in your technical writing portfolio? And I had to say, uh, nothing. <laughs> um, but that's journalism. That's any journalism job, any communication job, job that you're going to take. Every story you do, every project you work on, you're asked to become an expert on something new. Uh, when I wrote for NJ.com and Burlington County Times uh, in a regular newsroom, I had to become an, an expert on bread baking, politics, hurricanes, 
muskrat hunting. Um, and now it's just Ebola, COVID-19, tuberculosis, mosquitoes, HIV research. It's not so much different in the sense that you're learning something new. It's just a little bit more scientific here at Helio. And you shouldn't let that intimidate you. You're always going to be learning. You're always going to be writing. You're always going to be communicating. The topics just vary. Um, so moving on from my spiel, uh, Aaron, do you want to go first and give some advice to everybody? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Kate. Um, mine would definitely be, again, com coming with an English major background, you kind of have a lot of options. So just take as many internships as you can and try out all different things because you're not going to know what you like unless you try it. So really, again, like I had one internship at an insurance company and another at a publishing company. So there are very different backgrounds. And so like Kate mentioned, you have to kind of become an expert in everything you do. So having the internships and learning, okay, this is what I would do in this job and this is what I would do in that job. It definitely helps you decide what you want to do in the future and see what you're able to handle. Okay, Earl, how about you? What advice do you have? I would say don't narrow, especially when it comes to internships, don't narrow yourself. Try all different aspects. Try television, try print, try radio, try other new mediums as well so you can get a feel of those things because eventually those things might be integrated together where you, you might end up having to use all those aspects that you use so far. And also, I know maybe our age group, it's not as difficult, but now just keep using and utilizing and getting a better insight of social media because that's going to be the key. And always try to keep your ear to the ground when it comes to different trends that are coming up. Even if they don't end up uh, being as big as everything else is, it's better to have an idea of what you're doing as well. And I'd also say never stop learning because it's easy to think that you know everything and then next thing you know, something new has come up and it's like, man, I, you're already behind the uh, trend and, it, and you just got to keep learning and you got to keep, keep your ear to the pulse of things. And sometimes, you know, especially as you get older and you get experience in your career, that's the toughest thing to do. So you always got to be as open to things when you're a veteran journalist as you were when you're a young journalist. Absolutely. Joe, what advice do you have? Yeah, I would echo everything that everybody else said. I would also add, um, just for the more immediate um, thinking for um, college students, that your new, that your student newspaper is a very vital uh, resource for you to get your voice out there. And for me, it was like a very invaluable experience um, joining it and starting to get clips and, and published um, published pieces to my name. And I think that was that went a long way. You know, I started off as a as a staff reporter for the student newspaper, then I became uh, the arts and entertainment editor, and then eventually my senior year, I was editor in chief. And, and, you know, that goes a long way to showing future employers or if you're applying for an internship that you're able to, you know, work with others, work in a team environment, work in a newsroom. And then uh, if you do prove yourself in, in your that college environment and gain that management experience, it goes a very long way um, post-graduation. Absolutely. Eamon, anything else you'd like to add as well? Yeah, to sort of piggyback what Joe said and speak directly to under undergraduates, um, because, you know, that's where a lot of people first get their feet wet in journalism and writing in general. Uh, mine would be um, talk to everyone. Um, networking is something that you hear harped on over and over and over again during your undergraduate career and just when you're job hunting in general, um, but it really makes a difference. Uh, and not just, you know, going to career fairs, talking with people in your classes and professors. Um, what worked a lot for me and uh, a lot of my friends who work in journalism was just, you know, if there's a publication that you're interested in, um, go online, try to find their contact info, talk to people and reach out and just say, hey, what's it like to work in this field? Um, you'll, you'll be surprised a lot of the time these people like are very open to talking to students in particular and are more than happy to give their advice, um, you know, and then that makes a big difference. If later on you want to apply for a job there when you have a bit more experience, you have uh, a foot in the door, so to speak. Absolutely. Couldn't agree with that more. Um, and that's, I mean, that's pretty much all we have, uh, all we have to talk about here today. So if you'd like to learn more about what we all do and more about Helio in general, there's going to be contact information down below the video in the comments. And um, thank you so much for tuning in. And I hope that this has been educational and encouraging and best of luck with everything.